I built a paradise for my eggless queen ants, where they can live happy and free for the rest of their lives. I used to release my eggless queen ants, but one day I had the idea, what if I kept them? And what if I kept them somewhere safe? Da 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 da, introducing my unused aquarium. But stay tuned in this fast motion. Had an oversized lid, realized I needed to customize it. Took a lot of work to get it out of the frame it was in. Scissors were helpful. Got some plastic edging. Now let's put the aquarium together. Okay, starting with a base of sand. Pebbles, more pebbles, more pebbles, lots of pebbles. There's no real rhyme to my reason. I built a few terrariums before in my life, normally for plants. Sometimes I've done some for like crickets and roly polies, worms, beetles, small creatures like that. And I've watched a lot of cool videos that gave me some inspiration for this setup. If you notice here, I'm mixing sand with dirt. I love mixing sand with dirt. The substrate it creates is just a really nice texture. Um, and commonly, ants I would have would love that kind of uh, medium to dig in. But these queen ants, I'm pretty sure they're not gonna dig in these. I think the plants will love them though. So anyways, back to queen ants. A lot of ant keepers will actually bury the queen ants in the tubes once they know that they're not gonna lay eggs. And I've always been someone to release them, you know, let them live their lives or whatever is left. And I kind of had the thought that, you know what, maybe that's torment as well, to set them free, but they're really just big targets for predators and other ants to eat. So that's where this idea hit me. What if I just created a world for these ants to live in, to just roam? And if you notice earlier in the video, I had these uh, four Formica Queens. Well, they were all separate. They're all in their own tubes, their own containers, and, and it's just been like three months and there's been nothing. So I, I realized that a long time ago, they weren't laying eggs. So I did an experiment and found they could live together. So I was gonna release them, but before I did that, I went, what if they all live together in a really nice place? And then I also have these two red ant queens um, that, that I experimented if they could live together too. And they ended up, you know, cohabitating, uh, all of them eggless. So I'm going to end up adding the, the red ants into here first once I finish putting it together. And then I'll add the black ant queens. And it's, it's fascinating because um, the red ant queens, they're more apt to climb walls in the, in the jar container I ended up putting them in. When they're concerned and worried, black ant queens, I've not seen them climb once. So even though this lid, it's uh, not a grade A job, it, it'll do good enough for at least the black ant queens. The red ant queens, I'm not so sure if we'll keep them in. So let's, let's take a little tour and try it out. So this is before I add water, but it's looking really good. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the effort here. This is after I added water that kind of made a little bit of a mess, but I know it's going to work itself out on its own um, as it dries up and then settles. So there's one of the red ant queens and another one was hiding in the bush or something nearby. And they're all just kind of taking in, what is going on? What is happening? Where am I? And here's the black ant queens before I added them in. They're just chilling in this container. I've been feeding them things. And they're very excitable to light. Uh, slight movements um, but here I, they are after I put them in so they look calm and, and chill and they're, they're also trying to figure out what is happening in this world but they look they look like they're in the right place like this is a great place for them to be which is my hope you know I don't know how long this uh, will last hopefully a long time but so I wanted to create a world where things could exist and, and be at peace. So it'll be fascinating to see if, do they end up digging? Do they 
uh, end up separating um, do the black ant queens and the red ant queens run into each other and will there be conflict so on the first day there really wasn't any conflict at all it's that red ant queen again um, that I could see when I wasn't uh, when I was observing them the black ant queens end up hanging out together, mainly in the corner. Maybe it's to avoid the other queen ants. The red ant queens actually disappeared after that first day, and I assume they climbed out. And I'm, you know, it's like no big deal. Um, they're local to the area. They're on in the basement. I got tons of spiders in my basement, so if they escaped, there's not a huge chance that they'll uh, survive. And that's okay. Um, but then the next day, I was observing the ants. The, the black ant queens and yeah they're still hanging out in their little uh little horde the little gang in the corner under the succulent and they're a tad bit sensitive when i when i look at them observe them and they overall look really pretty content at peace they're not digging which you know doesn't surprise me they don't really have motivation to dig um, I'm not sure what goes through their ant minds, but they, they seem to know there's no chance of them starting a colony. I don't know if they were just, just never fertilized or just never ran into, had the opportunity. Uh, what happened? Uh, it's, it's a complex uh, situation. The nuptial flights, ants go through the dances and, and the looking for mates from other colonies and such. So I found all four of these during the summer at my day camp. Kids would help me find some sometimes and I would get a container and hang on to them, take them home and transfer them to a proper container and get them the water they needed and everything. But they're really neat to look at uh, in this setting. So I still have more queen ants that have produced eggs. Um, and hopefully they're successful and they don't end up in this uh, this sanctuary. Um, but then I recently added another batch of some Laceus, who they, I didn't realize they had flights uh, into September. Uh, it's my first time finding uh, Laceus in flight and I was really excited. I saw him flying from a nest in my yard, which made me realize I need to walk around my neighborhood and try to find some away from my home. So I found a bunch of Laceus who some had male ants uh, attached to them, uh, if essentially. And uh, they're in containers now, so we'll see if any of them end up becoming members of this sanctuary. But hopefully there's, they find success as well. I will check on them in another week. But I love the vegetation. Um, cheap plants from Walmart. Uh, so that way I don't feel too bad if I, they don't succeed. But I do end up moving this container, this, this uh, sanctuary. Oh, there's one of their red ants. I thought you guys escaped. I don't know where you've been hiding, probably deep inside one of the plants. But it's really fascinating to see her on the top of this leaf. Surprising. And probably watching me. So I don't know if she can't climb out after all. I, I haven't seen the other one. This is It's been the same one. Look at those mandibles. If anyone's got a great ID on this, let me know. more shots of this beauty and then here's some uh, roly polies I found as well I didn't add in a lot I'm, experience tells me you add in a lot they're gonna eat all your plants right away so these are some young ones they're just chilling happy little guests so I'm excited to continue updating and maybe adding pieces and things and possibly terraforming even more stay tuned <laughs>